Good afternoon, Cross Timbers. Today is Thursday, April 20th, 2017. I'm Dylan Craig. And I'm Caitlin Rivera. Today's stories oh. include... Oh, today's stories include Japan's trade system and a Nevada woman faking her son's death. These stories and more coming up next on Texan TV. In campus news, we go to Haley Smith with Sue Goodman for more information on the Silver Tap Ceremony tonight. Okay, so tell me a little bit of how you prepare for Silver Taps on the day that it is happening. We have a long list of to-do on the day the Silver Taps happens. We start by lowering the flags, the Tarleton flag, to half-mast all over the campus. We set up the area with the tables and chairs and the stage and the microphones and all that. Uh, we remind all our volunteers of uh, the time to be at the park uh, to get the ceremony started. And um, we have to pick up other things like chairs and uh, flowers and, you know, there's just a lot of details that have to take place on the day of. And then just before the ceremony, we rehearse our volunteers. They line up and we walk them through the ceremony so that they know what to expect when the ceremony takes place. Um, so on average, how many volunteers do you have sign up Hurt like each uh, ceremony that we host? I would say an average in the last four years since I've been working with Silver Taps, it's about 300 volunteers. Okay, and so how do those volunteers get started? Well, we send out an email message to faculty, staff, and students and ask for people to volunteer to participate as a candle bearer during the ceremony. Uh, and then we have uh, an intern to learn who, in my office who goes to individual organizations on the campus like the sororities and fraternities and service organizations and ask each organization or residence hall uh, to recruit volunteers for us. Okay, uh, do you see any changes to the ceremony in the future? Do you, are you going to add anything? Are you taking anything away? Or has it been pretty steady for the past couple of years that we've done it? Well, in the four years that I've been working with it, it has stayed the same. We're making a transition this year. We are moving the location of Silver Taps from the Heritage Park over to Alumni Island. And we're doing that because Alumni Island is new and it's about alumni and we are honoring alumni with the Silver Tap ceremony. So that's why we're making that change this year. Do you expect the ceremony to grow in attendance over like within this ceremony and the futures? Has it grown within the four years that you've uh, been in charge of it? Well, yes, I do, and the reason for that is uh, up until about 1964, Tarleton was a two-year university, college university, uh, and it became four years, so that meant there were more students. So now the students who were students in the 60s and 70s, 80s, as the, the institution grew in those years, then now that we are honoring people who have deceased, then the number of people who are deceased will grow proportionately with how the university is growing. And we have now 12,000 students in our university, and you know, in your future years, there'll continue to be more because the university has grown. Okay, and then final question: um, When, uh, the, like, can you give me, uh, like, the, like you said, it starts at Alumni Island? Um, can you tell me, like, the time when it starts, and like, when people can start showing up if they need to bring anything? Do they? What do they bring? Yeah, they just come uh, by themselves and they show up at 6.45. We'll do a little 15 minute rehearsal. There's a reception at seven o'clock that's sponsored by the Tarleton Alumni Association for all the volunteers uh, and people who are coming from out of town to hold the candle for their family. Uh, and then at 7.30, the ceremony will start. All right. Thanks, Haley. In local news, according to the Stephenville Empire Tribune, the iPad purchase for Stephenville High School is approved at Tuesday's meeting of the Stephenville ISD Board of Trustees. The purchase will be for 1,250 new 2017 128 gigabyte iPad devices at a cost of $394 each, which comes to a total of $492,500. The district will also be making a separate purchase of 290 iMac 21 and a half inch computers as replacements for the high school. And now today's Texas national and international news from the Associated Press. 
In Texas news, a spokesman for former President George H.W. Bush says the nation's 41st president remains under observation at a Houston hospital after recovering from a mild case of pneumonia. Family spokesman Jim McGrath said yesterday that the 92-year-old Bush continues to gain strength, had a good night's rest, and has high spirits. McGrath disclosed Tuesday that Bush was brought to Houston Methodist Hospital last Friday for treatment of a persistent cough. He said doctors diagnosed it as pneumonia, but that the illness has been treated and resolved. McGrath says Bush was not discharged Wednesday, but that he is looking forward to going home. In national news, a Nevada woman is facing criminal charges for faking her 10-year-old son's death, claiming he had leukemia and died, which helped her raise more than $2,000. 31-year-old mother Victoria Morrison was arrested last Friday at a motel in Reno, Nevada, says Carson City Sheriff Ken Furlong. Furlong said investigators had determined that Morrison lied about her son's illness and death so she could solicit gifts, including a helicopter ride for the boy. Morrison is being charged with obtaining money under false pretenses and a child abuse or neglect. Authorities have placed the son and Morrison's three other children in the custody of State Protective Services. In international news, Japan reports that in March, exports rose by 12 percent which is faster than expected, while imports jumped up to nearly 16 percent from a year earlier. The data reported suggests relatively strong foreign and domestic demand could lift growth for the world's number three economy in this quarter. The $66 billion in exports and the $60 billion in imports resulted in a trade surplus of $5.6 billion, down 17.5 percent from a year before. Exports to China surged 16.4 percent to $11 billion, and exports to the United States were up 3.5 percent to 12 billion dollars. The rise in oil prices boosted imports from the Middle Eastern countries by more than 45 percent, including a 75 percent jump to imports from Saudi Arabia. For more of today's national and international news, we turn to the AP News Minute. This is AP News Minute. Vice President Mike Pence is spending Thursday in Jakarta. Indonesia is the world's most populous Muslim nation, and Pence praised its democracy and moderate form of Islam. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson says the nuclear deal with Iran is a failure that will slow down that country's nuclear development, but won't stop it. A day earlier, he informed Congress that Iran is complying with the deal. About 100 U.S. and South Korean fighter jets and other aircraft took part in a joint military exercise in South Korea. The activities are being held amid growing tensions with North Korea. And a Russian and an American are on their way to the International Space Station. The pair blasted off from the Russian launch facility in Kazakhstan Thursday. Matt Small, the Associated Press with AP News Minute. Now in sports, President Donald Trump welcomed the New England Patriots to the White House Wednesday, noting the parallels between his own upset victory and their stunning Super Bowl win, but avoiding discussion of the apparent prison suicide of their former teammate Aaron Hernandez earlier that day. As he extolled the team's virtues and saluted individual players, the president did not name star quarterback Tom Brady, who notified the White House that he was dealing with a personal family matter and would not attend the ceremony. Trump hosted the five-time champions on the South Lawn and declared that no team has been good this long. We now go to Brittany Scott with the latest in entertainment news. Spring is upon us, and what better way to celebrate than cuddling up with a cozy blanket and watching Netflix? E! News reports the streaming giant has announced the titles it will be adding and removing in May 2017. Brad Pitt has a few new films, including the original movie called War Machine. Other movies highlighted are Jennifer Aniston's The Breakup, Benedict Cumberbatch's Marvel's Doctor Strange, and Ryan Gosling's The Place Beyond the Pines. As we all know, when you add something new, you have to let some go. The first three Jurassic Park movies, along with nine seasons of Scrubs and many more, will be making their way off Netflix in May. So find a pillow, your favorite blanket, and get comfortable. You only have a so many days left to binge watch some of your favorite movies and TV shows. Thanks, Brittany. Now for weather from the National Weather Service. Today we'll be experiencing a sunny high of 83 degrees and a low of 63 degrees. Tomorrow will also be a sunny high of 83 with a cooler low of 55 degrees. Enjoy the warm weather, Texans. This has been a production of Texan TV News, a product of the Texan News Service from the Tarleton State University campus in Stephenville, Texas. Watch us live on Apogee Channel 2.1 in the dorms at 1230 weekdays. If you live off campus, tune in on Northland... Ch 
Northland Cable Channel 9. You can follow the Texan News Service on Facebook and Twitter and check out our website at www.texannews.net for all of your latest local, state, national, and international news. Today's broadcast was produced by Brittany Scott, Haley Smith, and Ashley Inge. Have a wonderful day, Texans.